Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they are putting up for sale in their December of 2015 premiere auction. And I noticed that this one was in the catalog. It may look like a Trapdoor Springfield, if you look closely, but it is actually a very interesting specific type of Trapdoor Springfield, namely an 1865 variant, the very first of the Trapdoor Springfields. So the, where this comes from is basically the US Civil War uh, convinced pretty much anybody who wasn't under a rock the entire time that uh, muzzle-loading rifles were obsolete. Uh, cartridges had been developed. They weren't maybe perfect yet, but it was pretty obvious that, that cartridge firing, breech loading firearms were what the future was going to hold. However, the US military at the end of the war had something like a million 58 caliber muzzle loading rifled muskets in storage, left over from war production. So they saw that they needed to move to something a little more modern, but they didn't want to just throw away what were literally a million guns that they already had paid for, that had been built, that had all the work already gone into them. So a lot of this started with a, a really big Ordnance Department test of new rifle systems in January of 1865. They looked at, at something like 65 different rifle systems for uh, breech-loading rifles. And spent all the time, looked at all these guns, and then the war ended, and they kind of like threw the results away and, and just stopped paying any attention to it which didn't change the fact that the U.S. Army had all of these rifled muskets and they really needed something more modern. So, you know, in a kind of classic example of, of Army bureaucracy, they, they did this huge test, they threw out the results, and then just a few months later, in September of 1865, they realized, well, crap, we, we need something. And they just took the, one of the master armors at Springfield Armory, a guy named Erskine Allen, and gave him the job of creating a conversion so that you could turn these, these muzzle-loading muskets into breech-loading, cartridge-firing rifles. So uh, Erskine was a, he was a smart guy. Uh, he was a talented machinist. He was a talented designer. And presumably, he'd had access to a lot of these test rifles um, that the Ordnance Department had looked at. So it didn't take him long to figure out what he considered to be the best mechanism, the best system for converting a breech-loading rifle. And what he came up with is what we today colloquially call the Trapdoor Springfield. You'll see why in a moment if you don't already know. It is more technically called the Allen Conversion, after Erskine Allen. Now, the very first version of this was uh, named or designated the Model 1865, and 5,000 of them were converted from existing muskets uh, for Army trials. Now, there turned out to be some problems with them. They weren't a... Uh, it was a good idea, but it needed some refinement. And so the, the process developed, and there are many, many iterations of the Trapdoor Springfield, which we won't get into today, because what I want to do is take a specifically close look at this one, which is an 1865, one of those 5,000 of the very first trials guns that the Army made. So let's bring the, uh, the camera back here, take a closer look at it, and you can see how this differs from the, the common type of Trapdoor that you almost certainly have seen somewhere. All right, so the whole purpose of this conversion was to save money. The idea was to use as much of the existing rifled musket as possible, so you had to spend as little as possible to wind up with a modern weapon. So, so the design that Erskine Allen used was this, what, what became called a trapdoor design, where you would take the top of the existing rifle barrel and cut it away and mount this breech block assembly onto it. Of course, this, lowers uh, into place and then lifts up out of place. That's why the weapon became known as the trapdoor, because you had this trapdoor in the top. Now, this served as a breech block. So what you would do is open the rifle up like this. You would then take a cartridge and stuff it down into the chamber here, close this breech block behind, lock it, and then fire the weapon using the existing hammer. If we look at the rifle from the top, you can see that there is a firing pin right here spring-loaded, and that goes down in the breech block at an angle and hits the cartridge. The hammer and the lock assembly and the trigger mechanism on these guns, um, in particular on these first 1865 guns, was completely unmodified. With the exception of, of drilling out this area for the locking latch, this is all, uh, no modification necessary. Um, 
oh, I should say with the exception of flattening the face of this hammer. So the hammer here would have originally had a recess in it to hit a percussion cap. They filed that flat, and that's the only modification to the whole mechanism at that end of the gun. When you fire, the hammer comes down, hits that firing pin right there, which fires the rifle. Uh, really, it was a pretty, it's a pretty ingenious, it's a pretty effective and reasonably simple to, to do modification. Now, I had mentioned that uh, what the Army had stores of were 58 caliber rifled muskets. We normally think of the Trapdoor Springfield as being a rifle in 4570 caliber. Well, that came later. The first batch here were actually they retained the same 58 caliber barrel and they used a 58 caliber rimfire cartridge. The Army then changed that to 50 caliber and then later to 45 caliber. Now, some of the other changes, the other differences between this version of the gun and the one we're more commonly familiar with, one of the main ones is the extractor. So when I lift this up, you can see that there's a thing moving right down in here. You can see that right there going back and forth. That is the extractor. Looking at it from the other side here, you can see that extractor moving back and forth. That's what pulls the cartridge out. When the trapdoor lifts all the way up, it's released and it snaps forward, uh, ready to sit under the rim of a new case. You can see it's going to ride over the extractor right there. The extractor hooks into that little recess and as I pull it open, there's actually a series of like gear cog teeth right here that push the extractor back. Now this system would be very much simplified in later versions of the trapdoor, but it's a, a really neat one to look at on this 1865 pattern. The sights on the trapdoor would also change and uh, improve significantly. The sights on this guy are the same as on the old rifled musket. So you just have this flip up sight with uh, two different range options here and your basic battle sight. I think it's pretty cool to point out that this is very obviously a cut up donated uh, rifled musket. You can see it was originally an 1864 musket and uh, the front half of that date has just been milled out to make way for the conversion. On these conversions, we do have an 1865 date right here on the lock plate that was added. Um, and that is specific to these early 1865 trials rifles. Uh, typically on later trapdoors, you'll see, you'll have uh, dates more over here, and you'll also have dates and serial numbers on top of um, the trapdoor, the breech block itself. Another element that was different on these from the, the later ones is that this locking piece is actually manually operated. Uh, later on, this would become spring-loaded and quite a bit smaller. So this little locking bar right here goes into this recess in the back of, well, the back of the breech assembly, sort of. So what you do is pivot this all the way down into place, and then by pulling this down, this block is locked into the back of the chamber and prevents the breech block from opening. Other element of that is when you drop the hammer, the shape of the hammer fits over this locking lever and also prevents it from unlocking and coming forward or up. So as I mentioned, uh, they made 5,000 of these for field trials. Uh, the trials went generally pretty well, but they did come up with some areas where this mechanism could be improved. And that would lead to a whole series of Allen conversions, AKA Trapdoor Springfields. Um, I think at some point we will do a video showing more of that progression, but today we're just taking a look at this 1865 model. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's not every day we get a chance to take a look at one of the very first 1865 trapdoor Allen conversions. Uh, the, the later ones, the ones that were mass produced are fairly common today, relatively speaking, uh, but these early trials guns are quite scarce. So if you'd like to own this one yourself, if you have some other trapdoors and you want an early one to go with it, or if this just uh, strikes you as very interesting, well, Check the link in the description text below. That'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page about this rifle. You can take a look at their pictures, and if you're interested, you can set up an account and place a bid online today. Thanks for watching.